God bless you. Thank you so much for joining us tonight for this awesome conversation called Everyday Voices, where everyday people are doing some extraordinary things and you are at the right place at the right time and you're getting ready to hear the right things. Listen, I want you to do me a favor before we even get into this night. I want you to tag someone. I want you to like and to share because somebody needs to hear this word for tonight. I'm so excited to be here. It's been a couple of months. You know, we get busy um, with ministry at my church and just getting prepared for the fall, but I'm so glad to be here on this first Sunday night in September. We are in the ninth month, and this is the month of birthing, and so we're thankful to the Lord that you are part of this night, and it's going to be a powerful conversation. So listen, don't be selfish. Invite somebody to be a part to hear what we are going to be talking about with this awesome woman of God, Miss Danielle Marshall. And so listen, I got, I'm got. i so excited because guess what? We are almost at uncompromised time. Yes, uncompromised 2021. The virtual experience is on the way. And so I want you to stay tuned and stay uh, locked into the Uncompromised Movement Facebook page. And I want you to go to my YouTube page because we are going to be uh, announcing further information about that day. And so you don't want to miss Uncompromised 2021. Last year, it was phenomenal. We had some great speakers, some great insightful conversations called At the Water Cooler, where we talk about the hot topics of what's going on at work. And then we bring keynote speakers that are in the marketplace or that are in ministry that can impart and speak into your careers, speak into your destiny, speak into your dreams. Because guess what? We have been called to change the world for Jesus Christ in whatever sphere of influence he has called us to. And so again, I'm so happy to be here tonight. And listen, I'm not going to prolong the night. I have the opportunity um, to be able to share in the great conversation tonight with someone who I believe God is doing some marvelous things in her life. I have been watching her uh, from close and from afar to see that God has called her into an industry that is not very common, um, particularly for African-Americans. And I'm so thankful to have someone who God has called to go into uncommon spheres of influence in the culture, but they are bringing a kingdom principle and they're doing it without compromise. So without further ado, and I'm gonna give her a chance to introduce herself, but let me share a little bit about what I know from her bio. Miss Daniel Marshall, also known as the Style Marshall, is an IMDB, and I'm sure she's going to explain what that is, credited con uh, costumer for film and television. She's a wardrobe stylist based in New York. She has a clientele that ranges across all industries, both celebrity and corporate, come on, and entertainment. She styles artists, fashion shows, photo and video shows. Now listen, if you need somebody to style you, okay, I'm just giving you a hint, I'm giving you a hint, and marketing campaign. She also does closet makeovers and personal styling, something I think I need to do. I'm gonna have to tap into Danielle. And she does events for weddings and rebranding. She is sophisticated. She does groundbreaking things in the fashion industry. Listen, listen, I, you know, I can go on and read. I want Danielle to come on, Miss Style Marshall, to come on and share a little bit about who she is. <laughs> How are you, Danielle? I am very well and so honored for this opportunity. Thank you so much. It means so much to me. Well, I'm so glad to have you. Listen, Danielle, I could not, you know, just I could talk about you from your bio. Listen, I, you know, I know you have so many people that are watching that know who you are, but for the folks that don't know who the style marker is, tell us first who you are, and then explain what is an IMDB costumer. <laughs> well, again, my name is Danielle Marshall. Uh, I mean, just I'm just an all-around, just outgoing person that loves people. Number one, I love God. So in the industry that I'm in, you have to love people because, you know, sometimes they can be a little impatient with you. <laughs> but um, my, I, I'm a pastor's kid, grew up in the church. Uh, I, everyone put the title on me as like, oh, well, you're going to preach and you're going to follow after your father and blah, 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 which is all good. Nothing wrong with ministering, right. the, you know, the gospel in church, but it never sunk with me. I really felt like 
I'm beyond the four walls. I just knew that I'm beyond the four walls. And, you know, growing up in the church, you know, just, you know, seeing how things happen behind closed doors and, you yeah. know, it's just, it's a lot that I grew up with. And, but I am so blessed to have amazing parents that are still alive. One is 80. My mom is 80. My dad is 87. My dad is still pastoring um, of 50 some years. Uh, a lot of people don't know, but he's blind and he's still pastoring. And he, he, yeah, it's just it, the story behind why I do what I do is just amazing. The fact that God even graced me to be able to look at someone and be able to create a look and bring out the best in them and allow them to like step outside the box is amazing. Cause uh, honestly, uh, coming from his, my family, the disease is called rigmanitis pigmentosa. It's an mm -hmm. eye disease that is hereditary. And my dad, um, you know, it's really uh, heavy in the men. And so the doctors told my mom and my dad not to have me, not to have kids. Um, I'm the only one of my for my mom and my dad. And they were like, don't have kids because it's going, you know, she's going to get it. He's going to get it. And my dad was like, well, the Lord said. The Lord said. The Lord said that we were going to have a child, a love child. And I wanted a little girl. And so he had my mom before, you know, she got pregnant before they knew whether I was a girl or a boy. She, he was like, go, go ahead and get the nursery ready. Make it pink. I want this. I want that. She's coming. And so here I am. <laughs> and, you know, he's, God has just really shown me that regardless of what you go through and what your family has gone through and, you know, whatever disability, you know, you might have, nothing should stop you. I have parents that are still going and there's no excuse for me. So I, I, I Danielle, I'm a go-getter. I'm a risk taker. I don't want grass to grow under my, my feet. I want to, I want to leave this earth dry. I want to leave yeah. this earth empty. I don't want to leave the earth with purpose still inside of me. Yeah. So I believe my parents were great examples of that. And to see that, like, honestly, I have been affected by the disease. <laughs> to be honest, the fact that I can actually look at somebody in style and, you know, I can drive on my own, even though I wear glasses and things like that. Like, it's, a, it's, it's nobody but God. Because at this age, my dad started to really lose his sight. So he always was concerned about me, you know, and just to see how God is just like, okay, well, I'm going to use your vision, what you do have to bless somebody else. I'm going to use that vision because Minister Raquel, my left eye is the worst. So if I, if my right eye was like my left eye, there's no way I could drive. There's no way that I could style or even really work because my left eye is the worst, but God has honestly strengthen and maintain my right eye so thank god for the right eye and i'm so i'm able to you know do what i love and you know what's amazing about you know when you talk about eyes and being able to see i mm -hmm. think about not just physical eyesight but i think about vision Absolutely. and you have to be a visionary to be able to do that costuming and to yes see what people need and so that's not just your physical eye yes. that's your ability to create and imagine and that is such a god-given um because he's creative and so okay. the fact that you have the ability to create look at people and say this is what i see yes. you wearing and this is what i think looks good on you yes. and let, let me ask you this mm -hmm. how how did you get into and you know, for those of you that are maybe the first time for uh, coming on this um, particular Facebook page, we are talking about how believers penetrate and infiltrate the marketplace. Again, because this is something we are engaged in every day of our lives and we need to know how to be in those spheres successfully and to bring the kingdom principles. And so I, that's why I love Daniel, these conversations because it's helping people to understand that wherever they are called to or wherever they are assigned in this hour, that they can bring the kingdom of God into those arenas. And so what, what was it like? How did you know you had the ability to uh, create and, and to dress people? And why is that important? And, and how, do you, how does that connect to, you, to your calling? Well, I mean, as a child, I always had a knack for clothing. Just, I mean, you could ask my parents, I always dress myself. I would like put little pieces together. Um, when I could like buy my own stuff, I would make like, it was just, it just came natural. It was just natural for me to just 
dress well. And being from how my parents dressed me and just seeing how they dress, they took me to like the best store. So, you know, it was just, I already had, it was just like building up in me. They planted a seed. And then when, you know, I just would go in my closet and just be like, my mother would be like this. And I'd be like, no, that, what about that? Let's put that together. So that's where it really started as a child. Um, but back then, like, I mean, as I've grown up, I'm in my forties now, praise God. And exactly. back then, you know, styling, being a stylist was not huge. That was not a career move. So, I mean, my mom wanted me to be a lawyer. She was a court reporter. So she wanted me to be in the law field. So I'm like, okay, that works. You know, she's like, you're a great debater. I think that's what you should do. So I had, um, I got my bachelor's in political science and then I got my, but I was just like, God shut that down quick. And I'm like, thank you, Jesus, because that was not for me. That's too much reading. And I, no, I don't love that, you know? So yeah. then it really all started when I went and got my master's in education because I love kids. So I thought I wanted to be a teacher as well. I always said as a child, I was like, okay, I'm going to be a teacher when I grow up. I love young people. But, <clears throat> you know, I did do that a little bit, but that still was not like my passion. So it was when I was in um, graduate school and I started working at Bloomingdale's part-time. That's when I was like, whoa, I, this, there's something here. There's something to this. And it wasn't just because I was good at styling, but it was because people kept coming back. The same people kept coming back. Their family, their neighbors, you know, the word was getting out. You got to go see this girl in the dress department, you know? And then not just that, but like the company was like, expanding me. They were expanding my territory. They were moving me around. And then I was being moved to a different Bloomingdale's and another Bloomingdale's and then ended up in New York Bloomingdale's and then ended up at Saks. So that it's just when you can do what you're doing for free, when you can do what you're doing, what you're doing without eating, sometimes without sleeping, you know, you're sacrificing for it. That's when I feel like, you know, it's a passion because you're forgetting about everything else. You you just really want to do, you eat, you sleep it, you breathe it. That's all you think about. I mean, I've gone to sleep, taking a nap and I wake up and see a vision of an outfit, you know? So things like that just followed me. And I started to be like, this is something, there's something to this. Even then I wasn't thinking ministry though, you know? Yeah. Um, so it wasn't really, wasn't really till later when I was like this, there's ministry in this. This is where God wants me to be, you know? And I never, ever, I always, always, like when I got awards back in Bloomingdale's, I always, you know, gave credit to the Lord. I always gave honor to the Lord. I was never, you know, ashamed at all. I was always like, thank you, you know, to God be the glory, um, you know, even at a younger age. So I, I knew it was my calling once I kind of went out on my own when God was like, okay, I'm ready for you to transition and do this full time. And I was like, okay, so like no other job, <laughs> you know, like, are you sure? So that's when I was like teaching, trying to make money as I was like building, cause I was doing things for free. And I was, you know, so that's how you know, you know what you're calling, you do it for free, you serving while you're doing it for free. You have the same cheerful attitude yeah. while you're doing it for free. Yeah. That's how you know what's your purpose. That's how you know you're called to it. Period. But Daniel, you, Daniel, you said something so great. You said, I tried and I went to law. Uh, it didn't feel right. right. I, I, I went to teach. Mm, that didn't feel right. And so what I love is that there was this time where you wasn't sure about what your calling was. And I think people get frustrated yeah. where like, I, I don't know what my calling is. Well, you know what? You're not alone. And that's not where right. you have to, like you said, you have to go back to the creator who made you. Yes. And then also find out, like you said, what, what what are you passionate about? Where do you where do you what do you do things that are naturally um, easy for you and it's a struggle for other people? And I think right. about like you said where you like you you felt like you flourished when you went into Bloomingdale, like something awakened in you, and, and, and you began and you and you said, I'm I'm really feeling a pull in this direction. Yes. And you also said something that I wrote down. You said that I kept teaching as I was building. Absolutely. So as you was building your skill capacity, yes, you were building your repertoire. You didn't stop your regular job that you weren't yes. that happy with mm -hmm. to go to do what you love. You, you said, I got to do this. I got to maintain this right. so that I can do this. Oh my God. 
that you just that is probably because so many people feel like, well, you know, I, I you know, I, I got to go quit my job and I got to, you know, mm-hmm. go. And, and that's not necessarily I know people that were working in children's services and were actors. They were like, I got to have I got to eat. And Absolutely. so this was not going to be their calling, but they had to take and they had to go through a process. And I think yes. people don't want to go through a process when they know that they have a gifting or a calling on their lives for what, whether they be inside the church or outside that they're not willing to build to yes. get to that point. And so yes. that was so powerful. Mm-hmm. And Daniel, I'm going to ask you this last question. We're going to take a quick break, but yeah. what, why do you feel that's so good? Because what is it about clothes that helps people? Like, I think about sometimes, like, you know, I grew into fashion. Like, I wasn't the fashion aficionado. It was people along the journey of my life Mm -hmm. that said, no, this, the bright colors look better on you. Beautiful on you. Um, You know, black slims you down. How Mm -hmm. do you help people to know what clothes, you know, looks good on them? Because some people, you know, when you when I get my hair done, Danielle, and my clothes are right, I feel like I've just had ministry. <laughs> Absolutely. Right? So how do you help minister through the clothing? How when you dress people, like you like I know you're 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 helping people to have this experience where they're seeing the best of themselves. Yeah. Tell me about what goes into that for you when you're dressing someone. Well, first of all, um, before I even get into a conversation with them, I have a conversation with the father. Wow. I, I literally pray before every client. I pray wow. before I pray before every before a contract is signed, before I send an email, before I take a deposit. Um, because again, physically, yeah, I can be like, that's not right for you. This is right for you. But the Lord is He created you. You know, he's the creator of all things. He knows, he is the only one that knows where you're going and how far you're going. So I can't put it on myself or when I have a staff to say, oh, well, we're going to do this. No, I have to take and get my direction from the father. So I pray in the spirit. I pray in English. (laughs) And I ask the Lord, what do you see for them? Show me so that I can show them. Show me because if I don't get it, then they won't be receptive either. So I I go to the father first and then I have a conversation. I have a consultation. I talk to them, see where their head is. Because one gift that God's given me is I can look at you. I can see what your style is. I can see what you're used to. But I can also see where there could be some work, you know, some assistance, some like, okay, I'm just going to push her out the box a little bit. Maybe just add this color or add this print. You know, so that's just the gift God gave me, you know, but so with that gift and hearing his voice to know where to take the person, it's just, it comes with the conversation, me talking to the client and then seeing what they need me for. And then it's just literally like, I will send pictures, I will do a mood board and there would be some stuff that's like, I'm like, I know they're not going to like this. I know they're not going to love it, but I'm going to do it anyway. Let me just see if I can test yeah. them, you know? So I'll test them. And then if they're like, if they surprise me and say, oh, okay, that's great. I can do that. Let me try. I have had clients say to me, no, not that, but I still got it. By the time we ended up together, by the time I went to their house or their closet, or we ended up at this shoot, they put it on and they were like, oh my God, they actually bought it. Yeah. Really? So that's when I know I'm successful because if I bring something to a photo shoot and they're like, I want it all, or I want some of it, or can I pay you later? I'm like, yes. Because <laughs> this is something that, you know, I they would never, they tell me all the time. I get it all the time, Mr. Raquel. I would never have chosen that. I never would have picked that for myself. I don't even look at those colors. I wouldn't even think that print would look for leopard. No way. That's too much. Or red lips or red shoe. No, that's too much. You know, some people are still kind of like caught in the time warp, you know? So it's just trial and error, but it's really um, deleting of the Lord. Honestly, I just, it really is. And that's how I know colors. You know, I, I ask them for pictures. I research them. I look them up on social media see what they look like already, you know, see their body type. If I haven't seen them in person yet, you know, and then once we, you know, they book me, I send the whole questionnaire and they fill out questions and that's how I get to know. And, you know, it's just asking the right questions, doing the research and just just talking to them, getting to know them, their personality, where they work, what they do, 
you know? You, you just, I mean, you said something so powerful that how you bring your faith into your marketplace assignment. You said, I pray yeah. and I pray in tongues and I pray in English and say, God, how to dress them. And yes. that to me is so powerful because so many people would not think that's spiritual. Oh, you know, dressing someone, but you know, how do you ever feel that after you've dressed like this, that's ministry, like an minister to that person when they absolutely tell me a little bit about that. Absolutely. Ministry. absolutely because I, as there's a shoot I finished not too long ago. And the person, when the person put the clothes on, you could tell they just, they just lit up. When the person took the clothes off, they went right back to that original, like low self-esteem. Less, you could see it. It was just like, they became two different people right in front of my eyes. And that's how you know it's really ministry because people, we are our own worst critics, yeah. self-critics, you know? So yeah. we don't like this. We don't like that. We The flaws and flaws, you know, and I've had very picky people, but I've had very easy people as well. And to see the transition, like you said, hair is laid, makeup is done, outfit is right, shoes are fierce. For a man, you know, the cut, the grooming, the suit, whatever, the jeans, it doesn't even have to be designer, Minister Raquel. It yeah. can just be from Target or from a thrift store. And it's just, oh my God, I didn't know I could look like this. You know, so it's like God through me is building their self-esteem, building Good. their self-confidence, Good. you know? It's so, and, and the crazy thing is that he's using me for this because I'm somebody that's, it's, that dealt with low self-esteem. I'm somebody that, you know, uh, was criticized um, in school, you know, like I had to wear the thick Coca-Cola glasses. So I am such an underdog person. I am someone that if I see someone alone, if I see someone overlooked, if I see someone neglected, I'm going after that person. I'm like, it's going to be okay. God is love. I love you. You know what I mean? It's not always about scriptures. It's about showing somebody love, showing someone that you can make it. I have to tell you this one example. Please. I was on set you know, I work with Soledad O'Brien. So one time I was on set, she had a guest. Guest came in, guy came in, and it was a hot day. So I think he just walked from work because it was downtown DC, right? Walked from work. So by the time he came in, he was soaked, like shirt soaked. He took his jacket off, but shirt just shirt soaked. So we're like, okay, we're going to have to dry his shirt before he goes on set. So I just was patient with him. I said, sir, it's not going to be a problem. I could see that he just like, just kind of crawled into a ball. Wow. And I said, sir, it's going to be okay. Don't worry. I'll take care of it. I took the shirt because he was getting his makeup done at that time. I took the shirt in another room and I just worked on it, dried it, steamer, hair dryer, made it happen, gave it back to him. And the way that he said, thank you, Minister Raquel, I couldn't, a million dollars could not have paid me for that moment. I mean, he just, I mean, he was a tall guy big stature, yeah. just like someone that could be look intimidating, really somebody so intimidating, but yet such a, so, I mean, you could tell that he's dealt with low self-esteem. I could see the little boy in him. When I gave him a shirt back and he said, thank you. I was like, absolutely. No problem. Have a great, have a great time on set. You know, it was the little boy in him that I saw that said, thank you. And I was like, thank you, Jesus. In this moment, like I just take those things and I'm like, it just does my heart yeah. so good, you know, because I know he in that moment he's using me to help someone else in that time. Because I mean, he's about to go on national TV, a nationally syndicated show. Yeah. So I could have been like, wow. I don't know, we can't really do anything about it. Or I could have been like, oh, I don't have time. Or I could have been like, oh, I just work for Soledad. Like I didn't have to help him. I'm wow. working for Soledad. Yeah. But because the God in me, who am I to say you're you're lower than you know? Yeah. So uh, that it's just, it's just, I just love it. I just love it. I just love no, what it comes, I do. It comes out even in your talk. And like you said, the, the ministry part of your, your being able, like you said, you're not preaching through scripture. No. You're showcasing love. You're yes. showcasing a spirit of compassion and yes. excellence. And the fact that you were able to take this man that just felt like, oh my gosh, my day is over. It's a wreck. Yeah. And you were able to help him to switch gears by just saying, I got you. Let me help you with this clothing situation mm -hmm. and really be able. And I think 
what, what I struggle with with people is that we don't think that these things are ministry. We don't believe that this is our pulpit, you Absolutely. know, and if we don't take our pulpit, the platform that God has given us a voice to use it in, we are so missing the mark. Oh my God, listen, I'm going to pause us right here. We are, this is getting hot. Yes. Listen, I want everyone to stay tuned one moment. We'll be right back. I want you to watch this commercial. God bless. See you in a minute. Hey there, everybody. This is Minister Raquel Pittman, and I want to give you an awesome opportunity. Yes, I said opportunity to join the uncompromised movement. You know, when you have a great assignment in the earth, you need collaborators. You need people that will hook up with you to get the job done. Do you know that Jesus had partners? They were called the 12 disciples. Paul had partners that helped him to get the gospel all across the world. According to Philippians 1 and 5, partnership is biblical. And I want to ask you today, those that partner and participate and sow financially, you are actually partnering with God to get the work of God done and to advance a kingdom agenda in the earth. Part of the vision that God has given me for this marketplace ministry is, guess what? To help people to be successful in the marketplace. Some of the things that I want to do, we find that so many times people are struggling to pay for licensing exams like the LSAT or the MCAT, or even be a, being able to pay for an exam that would help them to get into graduate school, to pay for training certifications. In this ministry, I want to be able to be able to bless people so that they can do what God has called them to do, so that they can go back to school and it's not a struggle. But I need your help to get it done. And so I want to give you this opportunity to sow into the ministry of Uncompromised. You can do that by sowing a one-time gift at dollar sign Uncompromised for Cash App, or you can become a partner on a reoccurring basis at www.empoweredbythespiritministries.com. You help us to get this work done. Join us in building an uncompromised army in the earth. God bless you and thank you for your seed. Hey everybody, it's so glad, so good to have you back. And so I'm telling you, we have been just having a marvelous time here with Danielle the Style Marshall. And we're going to we're going to be uh, wrapping up soon, but we've got a couple more questions. And I just wanted you just to hear what this precious woman of God who is in um, a very uncommon industry, you know, Danielle, what 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 do you say to people that says, you know, that's a place of darkness? How can she dress people that are not saved and that environment is not for the saints to be in? Danielle, what is your response to people that think that these industries, we should not be in them? Okay, prime example. Our greatest example, Minister Raquel, is what would Jesus do? Or let's just say, what did he do? If anyone has read any parable, any scripture in the Bible, when Jesus was here for 33 years, what did he do? He traveled place to place outside. I mean, no wall, walls. He had no boundaries. Yeah. So, and I, I, we are, how can we be his hands, his feet, his arms, his mouthpiece? So good. They're not coming into our churches. I'm so sorry. Good. So good. And that's something I knew as a young person. I knew that just seeing the culture and obviously the culture of the black church. I grew up Baptist, but my mom, family Pentecostal. So I see the culture, you know, um, and like when I came up here, I joined a um, diverse, very multicultural church and I fell in love with it because I'm like, this is what heaven is really going to look like right here, you know, but what are we doing and how how can we get them in and it's kind of difficult even in even do a pandemic like after the pandemic i feel like honestly the church is not completely getting it and we have to go out we were meant to go out and darkness or not we are the light if we are truly living for christ we will be that light we don't have to compromise we don't have to dumb our our faith down we can be who we are and, and demand the respect of who we are and they will they will honor it. Um, I've been in the industry now for like over 10 years and 
Wow. I've never had anybody say, oh, yeah, you can't pray over your grace. Or no, they'd be like, they'll join me. Pray over mine. You know? Wow. You know, so it's very important because those are the people that need us the most. I mean, he came for the lost. He came for the sick. Yeah. That is so powerful. He came for the lost. And, and if we're not in those in those particular spheres of culture, we're not, like you said, they're not coming into our buildings. Right. We have to be that living sanctuary. And I, and, I, and I tell people how we show up in our work, how we do our work, Absolutely. how we conduct ourselves in our yeah. work, it all is a representation of Jesus. And so oh, yeah. I love the fact that you are a glory carrier mm -hmm. in the arts and entertainment industry. Like, come on, like, that is so awesome. Like, and like you said, you get a chance to be up close and personal on celebrities, pray mm -hmm. over them, I'm sure, Absolutely. you know, and, and when oh, yeah. opportunity arises, you know, like, you know, you are able to say, you know what, I can share Christ in this very um, wise way with this individual. And I think that's so profound. Um, yes. Would you um, feel like if, if someone says, I'm interested in getting into this industry, mm -hmm. what would you say to them is the best way to begin? How would they begin? Um, I think the best way, honestly, is to like write down your vision, like write down what you like. Like I said before, if you don't like people, this is not for you. Same thing like as a, as a pastor, you can't be a pastor and not like people. <laughs> Same thing for styling, you gotta like people because if you wanna go anywhere, you're gonna have different types of people, different attitudes from different backgrounds. So I say first, write your visions, write your goals and then you know, this is something you want to get into. It's not, realize it's not glamorous. It's yes, celebrities and red carpets and awards and it's all beautiful, but it's not a glamorous uh, 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 trade. It's not at all. Uh, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of hours. Um, so you really need to find someone you can shadow. So someone you trust that can shadow. I have a couple people shadowing me right now. Um, you know, find a good mentor. You know, who's someone you can learn from. Okay. Also, highly recommend taking classes. Um, even with the education that I had, I was like, okay, well, I'm not educated in this, so let me take some classes. I didn't get a degree from FIT, but I took classes like once a semester from FIT in wardrobe and TV and film and styling tricks Talk. of the trade. Talk. Te teaching me how to d distress. Teaching me how to make blood. Like, teaching me how to sew. I'm still working on the sewing issue, but teaching me all of those things, like you have to continue to educate yourself if this is what you want. Or in, in anything, in any industry, you can't just say, oh, well, I did a couple of shoots and I work with this person. No, no, you're constantly, constantly developing. You're constantly evolving. You're never, I'm 43. I'm probably about to go back to school. Honestly, I'm feeling God tugging me. So if you should never stop, you're still alive. You're still breathing. COVID, you know. is, COVID has come. It's still here. It's, it's coming with other variants. Why should you be stopped? If you're still here, still breathing. I mean, there's still purpose in you. So you got to keep going. You have to go after it. No matter what no's you get. I got plenty of no's. I got plenty of emails not responded to. I got plenty of uh, rejections. Talk, Danielle. And I'm still going. And I still got I have done a lot, yes, but I have a lot more to accomplish. And I feel like if you stop, then you're the only person that can stop you. If you stop, then I, there's nothing else. there's nothing else you can do. Like, you have to stay focused regardless of what comes about. You have to stay focused. You can't, you know, talk a whole lot about what you're doing. You have to move in silence. Uh, so Say it again. You have to do what? Move in silence. Say it again. <laughs> move in silence. Hashtag move in silence. Don't tell people what you're doing. I'm working on something right now. Very, like this many people know about it. God gave it to me. It's different. It's scary. But he shared with me. This is something that you, you, I want you to do. And that I believe is like another stream of income for me. So Danielle, you just said, I want to throw my shoe at you. I need, <laughs> I need to give you an offer. Danielle, you said, Danielle, I did a, a recent, I did a teaching um, on, on teaching on scale. And one of the things I taught about increasing your skill capacity was that it's okay 
for you to go to school. Yeah. Like some people say, well, I'm anointed. I'm anointed. I don't need to go to school. Not and enough. I'm like, that is, is you know, to me, that is, it, it, if somebody says I am anointed to be a dentist and have not gone to medical school mm -hmm. and dip, like whatever, it, whatever is necessary, I'm not letting you get in my mouth. Exactly. And so exactly. why do we feel that just because we're anointed, we don't like, I love what you're saying. You have this, you're like, I'm going back. I want to learn. I, I have, I have a master's in education, but I don't have a master's in this. That's because it. You want to be the best in your field. No, I'm gonna let you finish that. Cause you just, See, I know the chat is going crazy. All right, I'm just like Danielle. Yeah, I mean, but we talked about the building being a master builder. You have to do that first in order to have a firm. Like, if you have firm foundation, that education would be your firm foundation, and then you can build on top of that. Like, it just only makes sense, you know. Like, we can't be out here, especially now. You know, come on, it's social media. Like social media is 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 thriving right now, and everything is getting caught on tape. So you can make a wrong move, and it'd be like over, you know. So you can't just put yourself out there without the research, without disciplining yourself, and realizing that it's part. We said it earlier. The it's part of the process. It's part of what will make you complete, whole. Is part. I mean, you know, even business wise, like. Do you have the right accountant? Things like that. Like, it's just it's so much more that even for me, like I'm trying to learn as I, because it's just been me. Now I'm starting to add a person. I may add another person because, you know, increase with increase and with multiple streams, you can't do it all by yourself. So now I have to be equipped to, okay, well, how do I handle having staff? Never had to deal with that before. So I got to, I got to fix I got to get educated on that. So good. You know? So good. So, and honestly, like, I mean, I, I really hope that the church can be better at teaching these things, you know? And yeah, I mean, and, and if, if we're going to house people from the marketplace, or and I'm sorry, people from the world, the lost, they're going to, and they know more than we do as far as these things, yeah. you know, it's just at, at the point, it's just, the church right now, I feel like not every church, but just is not ready to equip them, you know, because they kind of come in and know more. And we spend more time doing offerings than altar calls, honestly. I'm sorry, but it's true. Like some places do. Yeah. And it's like, this is why it's so important that we go out because. Yeah. Yeah. No, Danielle, you. Oh. Danielle, you just gave, I don't like, listen, people, those of you who are watching, if you didn't watch for any other than the last five minutes, you <laughs> got the sermon of the year. I mean, you said so much that was just, the nuggets that you just dropped were just wow. incredible about, like you said, the need basically for integrity, about becoming more skilled in what you're doing, getting the right mentors, yes. getting um, the plan for how you expand. Like we don't prepare yes. for expansion. Yes. You know, um, I have a preacher friend who says, if you're able to do what you do by yourself, you don't have much, you know, but when you now God That's is true. trusting you because you are faithful in the little right. and God says, now I can give you more. I can trust your hands yes. to do more. And, you know, that's, you know, Daniel, that's part of the theme for this year's Uncompromised. It's talking mm -hmm. about the manifested blessing Absolutely. and God blessing the work of our hands and yes. you are showcasing how God will take what he's given you and you, when you work what he's given you, he is going to prosper those industries. He's going to prosper the work of your hands. And, then, and, then, and I'm seeing the, man, like the fact that you're growing is a part of that manifested blessing. Amen. Amen. Let me ask you one last question and we're going to get out of here because this conversation has gotten oh, so already? good. Already? Already, Oh my God. <laughs> Yeah, I've got to ask you, because people would get me if I didn't ask this question. Yeah. If someone is struggling with their look, with what they wear. Now, I may think I look cute, and I do. You do. You do, boo. <laughs> you know. <laughs> but, you know, how do you help? How does, what, what advice would you give to someone that says, I want a new look? I feel like I've been like this. You know, I've been in all black for 30 years because I'm heavy set and I don't like me in colors. Or someone says I'm too skinny, so I don't want to wear anything with too many colors. Like, what do you say? How do you help someone to find their look? 
and we're going to leave it right there. Okay. Um, well, honestly, it's, it goes back to the word again. The word has everything that we need out with the old and in with the new. You cannot ask for a new look. You cannot want something new until you get rid of the old. I have had people that ask me that question and I'm like, let's see what's in your closet first because you have to be able to part from those things. You know, so I, I go, you know, I have that type of conversation with them. We talk about, you know, how, like where you're going, what you're, what you're doing right now, as far as rebranding, you know, for your company, what your, who's your target audience, because that matters as well. Like if you're trying to attract millennials, you can't just be wearing like, you know, cardigans every, no, <laughs> you got to throw some plaid, some camo, you know what I mean? <laughs> I just learned something. No, I know, I know somebody's laughing that's watching me. Like, y'all better don't come for me. Don't come for me. Like, you're, I know you somebody's know, laughing at me right now. Go ahead. I'm, you yeah. Have to, you have to add some color, you know, you have to make some effort. So, you know, I really, I really target that old part of the person and try to move them away from that to get them into embrace the new because we really can't do anything if you're not willing to like part. I had a client that I went into her closet and I was like, can I tell you something? And I'm saying this in love, you know, and she's, she was a believer. So it wasn't like, she felt me, you know, it wasn't like offending her, but I was like, I said, you're dressing like an old person, you know? I'm, and I said, I, I asked her her age before and I'm like, you're, you're dressing like you're 60 and you're in your forties. I'm like, let me help you get there, you know? So I honestly, most of the stuff in her closet, I had to get rid of. And she, thank God, she let me. She, wow. she, you know, she embraced it. And she, I mean, that's the thing, one thing she constantly talk about to this day. And that was like maybe three years ago. I remember what you said. And I don't want to look like an old lady. I'm only 40 something, you know, especially, and you're single too. Like, how you want, how you want to try it on now? Yes. I'm just saying, come on. Boaz needs some color. Boaz needs some brightness. Hashtag that means Boaz needs color. <laughs> Black is amazing. It's beautiful. I mean, it will set your, your shape in order. I mean, obviously, yes. But. I mean, we don't need to have a closet full of black, you know? So I just deal with the old. I try to get rid of the old so we can move on to the new. That's how I do it. Look, Danielle, listen, <laughs> I, I want, I'm so, I want to give you in a minute, I want to give you a chance to share your information so that if anybody wants to contact you, to be able to reach out to you, to be able to be dressed by you. I have a feeling very soon I am going to be needing your services. I'm very serious about oh, that. Um, that. That would be just awesome. Would you mind, um, in your own way, would you pray for yeah. those that are saying, I want to break into this industry or I'm uncomfortable with even being in the marketplace mm -hmm. or finding my niche? Could you pray for those that are watching that are saying, hey, this is a great conversation. I want to know how to find my calling, how to get into ministry that may not be traditional as I know it. Would you pray for, for the audience that is watching tonight? Absolutely. Father God, we thank you, Lord Jesus, just for this moment. We thank you, God, that you have infiltrated your Holy Spirit by using such an awesome woman of God just to, to, to reach out to those who are trying to find their purpose, Lord. We thank you, God, because you are the purpose giver. Yes. You created us. You designed us, God. We are all fearfully and wonderfully made, Lord God. So if we just find ourselves at your feet again, Lord. If we find ourselves in your presence, Lord God, if we find ourselves in constant communion with you, Lord God, then we will know, then we will hear, Lord God, what our next steps are. Father, I pray for every listener, God, who doesn't know their purpose, Lord, for everyone who is seeking, Lord God, I pray, Lord God, that you will reveal yourselves to them, Lord God. I pray, Lord Jesus, that they will find you in the midst of any confusion, Lord God. I pray and I bind the hand of the enemy that causes those to fear, to have fear to step out, to launch into the deep, Father God. I pray, Lord God, that you will direct their paths, oh God. I pray that you will bring light, oh God, in the dark places, God, in their mind, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, that you will surround them, Father, surround them with the right people, Lord, that will minister to them, God, that will support them in their journey, Father God. Hallelujah. I bless you now, Lord God, that everyone is listening, Lord Jesus, that we will establish ourselves 
ourselves in you, Lord God, that we will be purpose-driven people, that we will not be afraid, oh God, oh, what man will say, what people will think, Lord, that you will guide us, Lord God, lead us into a clear path, God, bring clarity, God, bring clarity to, clarity to every vision, God, bring clarity, God, to every dream, Lord God, hallelujah, because you've given it to us from the beginning, God, you established it from the beginning, God, you knew it before we were formed into our mother's womb, Father. So we thank you now, Lord God, that we will do what you called us to do, that we will step out on faith, God, that we will jump, we will leap, God, we will go forward, God, nothing holding us back. We will move forward, God, because you go before us, God. You go before us, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you for going before us, Lord. We thank you now in the name of Jesus. And I pray, God, hallelujah, that you will hear these words, God. We seal these words. We seal this this, this uh, coming together. We seal this episode, Father, right now in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord, that you get the glory, you get the honor, and you deserve all praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. What a powerful prayer. Listen, I know if you are anything like me, you are feeling the presence of the Lord tonight. And God spoke. Danielle, our sister Danielle, I want to thank God. God for you. Oh, you, you so much. The Lord, I, that, oh my, <laughs> you just did, just, you know, just, did, I'm not the creative one, but I'm so, I love you and I, I thank God you. for you. You are a, an anointed gift to the body of Christ and God has some great doors that he is opening for you and you I see great things for you, Danielle, mm -hmm. get ready for a new and a new thing that God is getting ready to do in your life. I'm telling you, mm -hmm. doors are going to swing open for you because you have the right spirit and you have the right mindset and he can trust you. I just hear new doors. I hear new doors that are coming for you in this season. Mm -hmm. Get ready for them in the name of the Lord Jesus. And so listen, Danielle, share with the audience how they can reach out to you if they want you to dress them for their wedding, if they want to say, hey, I'm not sure how to dress. I'm not feeling where I've been. I want to start in the new. Come on, this is the season of the new. How yeah. can they reach you and begin that new? Sure, you can follow me on Instagram, which is at the Style Marshall. Also Facebook at the Style Marshall. I have a business page and as well, you can always email me at info at the stylemarshall.org. Praise God. Well, saints and, and friends and those that are watching from around the country and other parts of the world, thank you so much. Can we give a hand clap for our special guest tonight, uh -huh. Miss Danielle, the <laughs> style monster. Come on, let's give her a round of applause. Thank Come on, guys. let's send emojis. Oh, you are so welcome. Send up emojis, send up likes, send up all of those things thank you all so do much. in uh, the chat there. And so again, Danielle, thank you so much for being a thank part you of everyday voices where everyday people are doing extraordinary things like you are. God bless you. And we're going to talk to you soon. So saints, listen, I'm so thankful to God. Good night. God bless you. For all of you that participated and what were with us for this time. Listen, I know that you found value in it and we're going to be doing more of this. And again, I just want to let you know, to remind you, uncompromised 2021 is coming November the 6th, 2021. It's going to be online again, virtually. And by the grace of God, we will be back in person in 2022. But I want you to join us. We may be doing a registration process. We're going to have a little registration fee. But listen, when you know that your life depends on God information and God impartation. Anything you invest is always going to reap a thousand fold. So listen, I want you just to keep watching my page, keep following me on uh, Instagram and here on, on Facebook and, and keep look out for that date and time. And for the speakers, we are working on getting our speakers. It's going to be phenomenal as, as it has been every single year. I want you to also do me a favor. I want you to go to my YouTube page, Uncompromised Movement and like the page follow us because we're going to be doing more of these teaching. I'm going to be doing more teaching. I'm telling you, I'm coming out with another uh, timely teach. I want to talk about being spiritually, mentally, and physically fit. Come on. Based upon Proverbs 31. And I'm not just talking about the virtuous woman, but I'm talking about the whole person. We need to be spiritually, 
mentally and physically fit. And so I'm going to be doing a teaching series coming to a theater near you very soon because we need to unpack that because our spirit and our soul, our mentality and our physical are all joined together. And if those things are not intact, we're going to be in trouble. So I'm going to be bringing that to you very soon as well. Come on. I want to thank God for each one and every, every one of you that joined us tonight. And I want you to remember until next time, stay uncompromised. God bless. And I'll see you next time.